Hello, viewers. Welcome to another episode of our program, Marriage and the Home. My name is Israel Tajomawo, and as always, I'm very happy to talk about the subject of marriage. Um, in our last few episodes, we've been talking about we've had a, we've been on the series reasons for the challenges in marriage, and we said that many marriages have failed because they have not taken steps in the right direction to get it right first before going into marriage. And we said that some of these steps that they need to take uh, are the reasons why these problems are seen in the marriage. We're able to list about four of them. And uh, the fourth one that we talked about was the issue of being able to know the status of each other before going into marriage. That is the medical status of each other before going into marriage. At the end of the day, this poses a lot of problems. Today, we have a special guest in the house to help us, uh, you know, address some of these things, to throw some light, better light in a better way than I have done. Like I said earlier, I'm not that competent in this area. And I think the wise thing to do is to get somebody who is competent in this area. So in the house today, we have Dr. Margaret Okon. Um, she is a medical uh, practitioner with over 30 years of experience. Uh, she's currently the co-medical director of uh, Fragmark Specialist Hospital. She's going to be relating with us today from a bundle of experience. You are welcome, Margaret. Thank you very We're much. We're happy to have you in the house. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. yeah. So, we want to start by asking a few questions. That's the direction that this discussion is going to go. So that we can help the young ones who are having this. So many people are suffering in their marriages. But, you know, they are there already. So they may not be able to do anything about it. But the young ones who are not married yet, uh, there's hope for them to take corrections from the, the, the challenges that the older ones have had. So the first question we want to ask is this. You know, uh, in our secondary school days, when we were doing biology, they used to talk about this sickle cell anemia, and they would put a lot of formulas on the board. And they said that we should be careful who we get married to. I want you to just give us a little bit of light on this issue of... Uh, sickle cell and how it affects the marriage. Okay. Thank you very much for that uh, question. Yes. Um, we know that normally we actually encourage couples before marriage to go for pre-marriage counseling Seven, and yeah. testing. So there are various conditions that we try to rule out and uh, sort out before marriage. Yes. But Narrowing down to sickle cell disease, yes. it's not. It's a genetic uh, health condition. Okay, it's a um, a kind of um, autosomal recessive kind of genetic condition. Okay, in which you have the sickle cell disease where you have those who have chromosome S and S where you have SS manifesting and which is associated with a lot of health challenges. Oh, okay. So, but then how can one prevent? We try to advise young um, people yes. before they make their final commitment yes. to check their blood group and genital. Okay, blood okay? group and, and genital. genital. Yes. Everybody has a particular blood, blood group and a particular genital. Okay. So normally we have the a, we have S, okay, we have, uh, especially for the genotype. Now, some people, we, we, for the genotype, we have AA is the ideal genotype, yes. okay, that we want. AA, they are free to marry anybody. They can mm. even marry SS, okay. which is the C class. Okay. So, apart from that, we have some people who have AS, yes. okay, and then SS, SC, Depending, and for you to get a genotype, for an individual, you you receive you get one 
chromosome from the husband, from the man, okay. and the other one from the woman. That is from the father and the mother. Depending on what they donate, that is what forms determines what the genotype of that child will be. So we advise if before marriage you do your your screening, you do your genotype. If one is SS or AS, you must look for someone who is AA okay. to marry. Okay? So for that AA, at least, if you if you are SS, your children will be AS. There's no much problem. But for those who are AS, we discourage marrying another AS or SS. Okay. Okay? Because someone who is AS, if he or she marries another person that is AS, yes. meaning some of their children, children will have, some will have AA, some will have AS, some will have SS, okay. All right. which is a sickle cell disease, which we want to avoid. Okay. So as much as possible, we discourage anybody that has AS, look for AA. Okay. So that way, at least, at least you will have at least AS at worst, okay? You can be lucky to have AA. So if you're AS, I marry AA. I mean, some of the children will have AA, some will have AS. It's safer. So we try to discourage that because uh, for the sickle cell disease, it's, it's a very challenging condition. It drains you, it affects the mental health, apart from the physical, the medical condition because they're always off and on. In the hospital, especially when they suffer crisis, yes. and what can be unfortunate to have all the children. I've met someone that has all the children are all SS. Whoa. So you can imagine the whole family fortune. Yes. Even if you have four children that are normal and you have just one SS, mm -hmm. it's very demanding. So, and we try to discourage, we try to encourage people to prevent it yes. instead of waiting for it to happen and then you announce that. Even if you feel, I have cancer so before, a few days ago, someone even called me, mm -hmm. oh, can't we manage, is there nothing that can be done? I said, look, it's better to have a broken engagement yes. than to have a broken marriage. Because so, because of the stress of the situation, mm -hmm. some marriages are not able to stand the test of time. And some end up having a broken marriage because can be very so it's better to prevent okay. yes thank you very much that's a whole lot of information you, take. <laughs> you see the last statement you made i like it yeah. it's better to have a broken engagement than to have a broken mind you see there are a lot of things that are involved but the advice is that you need to go for that test go for the cancer seek medical cancer before you go into marriage because the problems you know they are they, they are they are they are they are very hard on the couples when it comes. So we need to take that advice. Now we want to ask another question. Um, are there other conditions like this that uh, the young ones should be worried about when they are considering going to marriage? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, of there are others, like I just said, it's just one. one. Yes. yes, there are many others that are genetically uh, related. Yes, which uh, we try to. Some you can do something about. Some there's nothing you can do. Yes, yes. But then, like you said, prevention is better than cure. Yes, there are other genetic, just like um, health challenges yes. that young people can look what look at for before marriage. Mm. Yeah, well, like I said. We encourage pre-marriage counseling and testing. Yes. So some of those, like some genetic conditions that affect the home, the marriage, we we have some issues. Like now, something like uh, some people that end up with having infectious diseases that is transmissible that can affect the home. The common one we can think about is the Human uh, immunodeficiency uh, syndrome. Okay. You okay. get it. Okay. HIV. The HIV. Yes, HIV okay. AIDS. Yes. So it's also a challenge. Yes. Because if you do that pre marriage counseling, if your partner is positive, 
we we are not saying you cannot manage, but at least you will be informed, informed and yes. better prepared yes. for the challenges ahead. Yes. Because we have what we call discordant partners, yes. where you have one partner positive and the other negative. negative yes. So when they are, we also have advice to give them so that they don't infect the other, the other person, person and also not just themselves, even the unborn, the unborn child. Mm -hmm. Some this HIV can also be transmitted to the child. So there are advice and medical advice that we can give them to prevent the transmission of that disease, that, that um, infectious diseases, like, you know, like I said, that HIV is something that if you do the pre-marriage testing, you can advise, oh, how best to do the, when you are pregnant, this is what we do, so you'll be aware and better prepared. We have couples, they have discordant couples, and they are being very well. They have their children who are not infected, but they came for proper counseling and proper guidance. Okay, so we also have some other conditions that can also affect, you know. There are some different type of, you know, when we're talking about all these familiar conditions, yes. we will think of, like in those days before you married, they would go and find out family history, mm -hmm. what and what, what conditions do they have, what yes. challenges. So that they will know. We have some conditions that can be hereditary, mm -hmm. that can run in the family, okay? okay? Some conditions like diabetes. Okay. Okay? So if one does that, you do your screening and you will be able to know, okay, this is my partner is diabetic or is one other partner. So you will not be able, not when both of you are diabetic yes. and you now marry, of course, the offspring, the chances of your offspring also Having, especially the type 2 diabetic, yeah. it's very high. So what can prevent it? If you know you are diabetic, make sure you look for someone who is not diabetic. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Those are one of the uh, health challenges that one can at least prevent. Yeah. Okay? There are some other things. Okay, for instance, we also have some of these, um, the one we talk about, all these our uh, recessive, X-linked chromosomal, uh, abdominal recessive, and uh, Abnormality. Let me not just go into big. For instance, I know that most of us knew about the the this uh, royal family. Quote, you know the royal family mm -hmm. in England, where they had this problem, what we call hemophilia. Okay. It's also a familiar uh, a genetic condition mm -hmm. that can run a family. You discover that in their own case, for that hemophilia, it affects mainly the male children. Okay. And that deprived them of having a king for quite a while okay. until they had to take a medical advice and look for someone who could break that gene. Yes. That led to the speaking of Diana, who now gave them sons that are now hemophilic. It's a condition that once the males they start, they bleed to death, you know, they easily bleed to death. Okay. But to break it because of the health. Uh, is, it medical knowledge. From, is it the same as the razor factor? I uh, hear something about that. That one is another, that another. That's another condition. Okay. Yes, that's another condition. But this one is hemophilia, yeah. which affects mainly the male, male children, yeah. and most of them don't survive. Oh, okay. because they will also do. So to break it, the royal family had to look out for someone. Mm -hmm. The yes. person of Diana. Diana, yes. Who now came in and now gave them some. That's why you see them now. We're having a king yeah, now. Yes. Do you get it? So those are part of all these medical uh, issues that one can. Yes, you talked about the resource factor. Yes. For our pregnant women, mm -hmm. okay? You know, normally we do routine, antenatal screening and all yes. that. So we have, for, you know, I told you, for one to do blood group and genotype and all that. That blood group comes along with the resource factor. We can either have resource positive or resource negative. Yes. So we have some of the mothers. And I told you they have different blood groups. Mm -hmm. We have blood group O, we have A, yeah. we have B, we have A B. Do you get it? So for those ones who are like O negative, yeah. because the resource factor can either be positive or negative. Yeah. Someone who is resource factor negative. Yeah. If she marries someone who is positive, yeah. there are precautions we take. Okay. Okay, we have injection. So we don't say because we are positive, we must marry positive. positive. No, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But if you are negative, you will, if you have that medical knowledge, yes. you will know that oh, my partner is 
positive reasons. Meaning, the unborn child can take the father's restless father. You get it? Can be positive, and you are negative. So during delivery, we take precautions to make sure the blood of that positive baby does not mix with the mother's of because once that is why we encourage people register in a good center. If it mixes, what happens? Yes, I'm coming to tell you that. <laughs> okay. Because most people, what we see now, people go to TBAs, go to nurses and learn nurses, and you know, parts, and they don't know, they don't take time into all their details. Mm. They believe going to this, ah, they will pay. No, there are many things yes. that you cannot see. Now, for that resource, what we do if the woman is negative? And the doctor said, there are precautions we do. There are treatments we give them to prevent the woman getting suspense. So if the baby's blood mixes with the mother and we don't intervene and prevent sensitization, the lady becomes sensitized because their antibodies will be developed in her blood because it sees that this is a foreign body. Yes. Once that antibody is developed in her blood, there's nothing you can do to remove it. It is permanent in her blood. Wow. So, subsequent pregnancy, the first pregnancy might escape the first baby. Okay. The subsequent pregnancies will now have challenges. Whenever they, they get pregnant, those antibodies that are formed in her blood will be going to affect the fetus inside yes. the mother's womb. Yes. And that's why I see most of them after the first child, they keep on having ah, they keep on having miscarriage or baby dying in IUL yes. what we call intrauterine fetal death. Yes. That is what causes it. So that antibody will now be attacking the blood, the baby in the womb, and they keep on registering death or miscarriages and all that. So, and these are things that can be prevented medically if you know your resource factor and you now know how to meet the proper doctor, especially a gynecologist who yes. understands this thing. So register in a hospital where you have gynecologist doctors that are experienced that know all these things. Mm -hmm. So if not, that thing becomes sensitized and it's permanent. Okay. But if they register in a good center, you know what to do to prevent that sensitization. Yes. Indeed, after delivery, we know what to do. Even before they deliver, we have some injections we give them and all that. We can prevent that occurring. And it can be very challenging. You can imagine after the first baby, you keep on having fetal death. So, there's a lot. Yes. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you can you see much. very clearly that you need to take these steps. You know, to prevent all this from happening. Mm -hmm. Just to mention a few, we have talked about the um, the sickle cell anemia. We have talked about the HIV AIDS. We have talked about the hemophilia, hemophilia. Yes. and then the resource factor. And they are born. These are reasons why you should be afraid. You need to go for the test. You need to go for the counseling so that you don't make this mistake. The bottom line is that. You have to be prepared. It's no small issue. A lot will go wrong. You give yourself pain. Give the children pain. Give your extended family pain. So you have to prevent it. Thank you very much. Man. We want to ask another question here yeah, quickly. Um, uh, for Okay. I think uh, what you have said now, you have been able to tell us how they can avoid it to go for tests. I want to ask, do you think there's enough awareness on this subject? I don't think so. Okay? Because, um, <clears throat> anyway, it starts with, you know, this kind of thing, because of the way the country has taken the health care. Yes. Prevention is very, very important. Yes. We have to talk about preventive uh, medicine. There is no enough awareness. Most people, there's so many things. These ones we just mentioned are just few. There's so mm -hmm. many yeah. genetic conditions, familiar conditions that are preventable yes. that people are exposed to. We don't have enough awareness. Because you know, there must be a, a, a there, there must be um, enough um, will right from the government. Okay. Policy making. You know, having enough the policy, putting the right people in the right places, people who see the need to know that we need to have 
health education. Yes. So most people don't even they go have sometimes we have what they we have the what TB day, every day, malaria, all those things. How many people? Most people they don't even budget for it. Okay. If you talk, they will tell you there's no provision for it. Mm-hmm. To enlighten, to go into the media, you know, it's so expensive. Yeah. And we doctors, how much do we have? We need that the policy makers yeah. to see to it. The government to vote some sufficient money yes. into this area of prevention. Yes. Do you get it? We need the government to be proactive, to lead, to see the need, and then put the machine at work. Some of you see doctors going on strike. Mm-hmm. But the, the important thing that the people who are even fighting for don't even have an insight to what the doctor. They believe the doctors are too proud. Why are they going on strike? Because most of these things, people are ignorant. The top people, the politicians, when they say they fly abroad, abroad yes. for even ordinary cold, Qatar, cool. yes. they go abroad. But the poor masses who don't have money, to travel abroad, yes. what are they left with? Healthcare, body blood, everything is so expensive. Mm-hmm. So they can't even assess. That's why I see most of them resorting to traditional, yes. all those, and many people are dying mm-hmm. daily. So we don't have enough awareness. We need that awareness, sensitization of the populace, of the various conditions, health conditions. There are so many. Tuberculosis is there, killing people daily. Yes. We have HIV, even simple malaria. You know, how many people die every day from mm-hmm. malaria? So we need that awareness and uh, we pick it. So, it's so, so much. We need people to be sensitized. And I love, thank you for this kind of program that enlighten people. So, so that people will know that, look, there is solution. Yes. There is hope for the hopeless. Yes. So what do we have? But we in the health center, we are ready to serve. Yes. But if we're given the opportunity, we don't have the enabling environment. Yes. Okay? Even some things you want to do, the equipment are not there. Even personally, even the private sector, some of us in private sector now, trying to do these things, even the system frustrates us with so much bills. Mm-hmm. Pay this, pay that, mm-hmm. you pay local government, you pay this, you pay all those organizing. They fr- instead of encouraging us, mm-hmm. when we are ready to give service to the masses, to the communities, mm-hmm. but all these bills, if you see the taxing, the everything, you are, we, 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 you know, we caged in. Yes. So we, we, we don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. We can't even help the people because we can't even help ourselves. I hear you. You, you hear get you. it. Most of it, there are some things that should be, or something like hospital services. It's a humanitarian thing. Mm-hmm. The government, when they are, all these, they are taxing and poor, they are supposed to give us some concessions, knowing that we are doing service to the community. Yes. They are supposed to even give us soft loans. Mm-hmm. But most of this, and what you see in this country, is self. Yes. We, ha- we have to help ourselves yes. and struggle through it. Yes. Even those of us who work several years with the government mm-hmm. and you come across the pension and you want to start with, there should be some soft loans to encourage us so that we can help the society. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, the system is what it is. Yeah. And I believe that... Um, this will get to the appropriate authorities. Yeah. And also, uh, our young ones who are viewing this program, they will learn something from this. Like she said, there's not enough publicity on the subject. Uh, so uh, let's take advantage of what we have, this medium, and learn something from this. Before we go, um, we would like to ask... Dr. Cohn to give us the young ones' advice. Just a short advice on this subject, those who intend to get married in the future. Just a final advice. Thank you. I advise young couples and young intending couples. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe you need to take some water? Yes. You just take some water. <coughs> To please go for pre marriage counseling and testing okay. before final commitment. So that we know how best to advise. Because, like I said, it's better to have a broken engagement than to have a broken marriage. I wish you all the best in your 
lifestyle devil. And of course, we have to be prayerful because some of these conditions cannot be prevented. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, we want to appreciate you for watching. You have received the advice. The key thing there is that you should go for premarital counseling and then go for advice, do the tests so that you can know your status and avoid future pain. I want to appreciate all of you for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I want you to look at the button below that says subscribe and hit on the subscribe button so that you can be receiving notification from us. Till I come your way again next time, I want to say thank you and bye.